reflectors are interesting because no two reflectors are quite alike. No. They're the most unique. You're only 1% of the population. <laughs> So in human design, there are five main energy types. There are manifestors, manifesting generators, generators, projectors, and reflectors. And essentially, your energy type is exactly what it sounds like. It's how you exchange energy with the world, how you use your energy to navigate relationships, career, and ultimately the mechanics of how you start to move towards your soul's purpose. Um, energy type is less about personality, so it's important not to get hung up too much on uh, different personality characteristics of each type because within each type there are so many uh, there's so many different aspects and rooms for uniqueness within the body graph um, but this is a fantastic entry point into starting to understand how you operate in the world um, so today we're going to talk about reflectors and uh, how you know somebody is a reflector is basically when you're looking at the body graph there are nine shapes or chakras or energy centers within the chart. And when you look at a chart and you see that all of those energy centers are white, that basically makes it reflect. Yes. And you'll also notice being a reflector, you have no channels which connects a center and then lights them up with a specific color. Your energy particularly is activated through your relationships with other people and then your channels become activated and defined through your interaction with others and through the transits. And because your energy is not nearly as consistent as the other types, because your lack of definition of consistent channels, you are very fluid in how you experience your energy. Yeah, you're the ultimate empath, essentially. So whatever environment you're in, you're always taking an energy from people around you. And and, and what it means to have an open center basically is that um, when you're around people who have that energy to find, you take that energy in and you amplify it. And you have the ability to become very wise about different types of energies that are around you. Um, and because, like I said, you have all nine open, you have the ability to learn about many, many different things in this life. And that's also why uh, reflectors are interesting because no two reflectors are quite alike. No. They're the most unique. They have the most uniqueness within uh, the reflector type. Mm-hmm. And you would think that maybe because you're only 1% of the population that you might get to see some consistency. And yes, there are consistent characteristics that you will experience, such as being extremely sensitive to your environment and the energies of people in it. And you might have a great affinity with nature and you might also be able to be so sensitive to people that and this is a consistent thing um, that you're able to really absorb and you need to filter through the energies that you take in, filter them and then let them go. And it's being mindful of taking on and holding on to those energies and holding them without letting go will then cause uncomfortability or stagnation within yourself it's like you take it in and you let it go be you fluid with it being fluid be fluid with it because essentially you're here to become the environment that you're in and so long as you don't over identify with the environments that you're in this can be a very beautiful thing because it can show everybody else around you um if if the environment is good or if the environment maybe needs something that needs correction yes so it is correct for you to have ample amounts of alone time so you are able to get clear in your own energy. And then you feel your gifts being amplified in your interactions with others. So for you, it is really important and crucial for you to find your tribe and to find those people closest to you that you feel safe around and that you can explore yourself and then find that those people around you uh, will utilize the gifts that you have in being... And recognize you. And recognize you. And invite you. Yes. Inviting you in to share your gifts of direction and evaluating 
the whole picture of certain situations. Absolutely. And you get to give yourself the ultimate permission to walk away from an environment that doesn't feel correct for you. Because you become your environment, when you're in the correct environment for you, you'll literally, it'll create health in your body. But when you're in an environment that isn't correct for you, it'll literally create illness in your body. So give yourself the ultimate permission when something doesn't feel right. That's your cue to move on and find the environment that's correct for you. And you will notice uh, if you engage with someone and after a couple of moments of communication, whether in person or even virtually through the phone or computer, if you start to feel ickiness or if you start to feel like your energy is not where you usually are at or where you want to be, that is your cue to and permission to disengage from that energy. You're the ultimate authenticity meter. Yeah. You know what feels good and t tapping into your intuition, you know where your energy feels strong and uplifting and then those energies that feel depleting and draining. And once again, just it's up to you to honor and self-care and recognize those in those intuitions. It's in your, it's in our bodies where we feel all these things. Like we have mm -hmm. so much energy within our whole, underneath the mind. Granted, we have been trained and conditioned to think that all the decisions get made up here, but so much happens down below and the, the voice purifies the energy coming up from the body into the head of the awareness and the the brain and your mind is simply the processor and the computer that translates all this information that you receive from the lower part of your body absolutely nobody's authority type or their decision making decision making strategy in human design is their mind um, but for you because you don't have any definition you actually your authority type or the way you make decisions is very, very unique. You are designed to make decisions in time. You have permission to, if you, there's a big, big life choices, big life decisions even. Um, you, let's say for example, moving or going to school or getting some kind of education or training or um, you might be thinking about it for days and weeks, um, months even. It depends. It depends on how much you... How much clarity you yes. want to have about the decision. So yeah, so this isn't for the small things like what you're going to eat for dinner or should I hang out with my friend tomorrow because... You, like we said, you have so much awareness within your body and within an environment to tell if something's going to be correct for you for small decisions like that. But for bigger decisions that hold weight over a long time span, um, it's important to wait. And they say to wait a lunar cycle. And the reason for that is because um, even though you don't have any defined centers or channels, you have different gates that are on each energy center. And as we move through a monthly cycle, the moon actually activates every single gate, one through 64, throughout the entire body graph within the lunar cycle. And for you, because you don't have defined, consistent awareness in your energy centers, you're what's called a lunar being. So you are extra in touch with the moon and its energies. The moon affects everybody, but it especially affects you because of your openness, you're really able to feel the moon. And because of that, you know, other people, you know, they might feel like their life has a mini episode within a year's time span because the rest of the types are solar beings. But for you, because you're a lunar being, every month essentially is like a whole other episode of your life. Um, and so reflectors will tend to feel as though at different times in the month, they have uh, certain, they arrive to certain clarity. So it's not necessarily about always waiting exactly 28 days so much as it is getting in tune with your natural monthly cycle and knowing exactly when you're going to arrive at clarity. And, and journaling can be really, really helpful for that. Journaling, cycle mapping, all that sort of stuff can be really, really helpful in the beginning when you're trying to get in touch with your natural rhythm. Um, but just understand that 
for you, um, like your best friend sentences are like, um, you know, that sounds like an amazing offer, but I need time to think on mm. it or, um, you know, let me get back to you and really owning that you need a lot more time than other people to make big decisions. Yes. And also paying attention to your intuition because you might already have feelings or inklings beforehand, uh, that will give you clues that this these changes are imminent and to be aware of being aware of your feelings even journaling them out paying attention to your dreams reflectors are the, actually the oldest type in human design mm -hmm. um so yeah like long time ago everybody was a reflector so think back to the days when we were very animalistic and in touch with our instincts that's mm -hmm. because we were open and we're really in tune with nature and what was going on with the seasons and with the moon so you still do have really strong instincts, but they're more related to what's going on with the environment and less related to you personally. Ah, yes. And with that being said, too, um, you may find that when you're trying to plan something out, um, let's say that you're going to plan out uh, a class that you're doing at a retreat, you may find that it's hard for you to plan out all of the details, but then once you're in the environment and you're kind of wrapped up in the experience you're actually really good at feeling what the energy what you're really good at feeling the energy of the group and knowing exactly what that group needs so i would say just take the pressure off of yourself a little bit to feel like you need to over over plan exactly how an interaction is going to go and trust that your body's going to know what to do when you get there yes you might be feeling extra, if you feel anxious or nervous about, let's say you own a business or you have a, a meeting and you're not really planned and it, it's just not flowing, like you're not really a, a pre-gamer almost, but once you get into the now moment, you will know exactly what to do. And this is all pa also part of the authority and the lunar authority. Like you spend a lot of time feeling into these different choices and then you will make decisions in the moment because then it feels right and it is the right time. It's all about being at the right place at the right time. Um, so other people might even see you as making rash decisions or making um, like, oh, wow, that was kind of impulsive. But to you, because you have been feeling these uh, feelings or these intuitional hits uh, for the time, however long time it's been taking you, um, it will feel accurate and may feel impulsive. It's like you're almost a timeless being that then does make decisions in the now and when it's appropriate at the right place and the right time. Also, I do know a couple of reflectors that if given a, oh, what do you want from the grocery store kind of question, it's too big, it's too broad, but hey, this is also a, um, an idea, is honing in on the specifics of what to eat for dinner. So, hey, I am thinking about making a salad. What would you like in the salad? And then, you know, as a reflector, it might be a little bit more easy for you. So this is great for your partners or friends even, or family to get really clear on asking specifics for you because having too broad might be a little too overwhelming mm. of the question. Yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. And it's funny too, because we were hanging out with one of our reflector friends the other day. We were at a farmer's market and she was really overwhelmed by all the stimulation of everything that was going on. And she was trying to find gifts for her, for her family to bring back with her when she flew home. And so I told her to not put so much pressure on trying to like overthink what she was going to get and to just basically say like, okay, like, test out all the whole perimeter of the market and try out, essentially try out all the different mm. little environments within the market, feel what feels good for you, and then give yourself permission to go back and um, basically do a second lap around once you feel out and sample all of those different little environments before like committing to anything too much. Mm. That's a great idea. Yeah, that's great. <laughs>